Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here. My name is Marcos. I'm a solutions architect for AWS Sydney. So today we are going to talk about container security. And as you know, organizations are adopting containers because containers help them to improve flexibility, portability, but you also can maximize resource utilization. But ultimately, these organizations are trying to be more agile to deliver products and services to their users. However, there are some important security aspects in this container journey that should be considered, and that's what we are going to talk about on the next 30 minutes. So containers are great, they solve a lot of problems, but they also, uh, require some, they also have some security challenges that we need to take care of. And the first one is because of the dynamic nature of these containers. So they come and go, they scale in, they scale out, and during the day, they may get different IPs, different ports, different, even different services, uh, servers and hosts. So making sure that we have the right security isolation on the network perspective is very important. And secondly, they usually run in a very distributed and complex environment with several microservices, with several dependencies. What that means is that having the right identity and access management in place, so a container can connect to the right AWS service or to the right dependence, is very important. As you know, containers, they have a layered approach for their, their image. What that means is that a lot of people may have touched those container images, and making sure that there is nothing vulnerable in that container image is very important. And yes, namespaces, they do provide a good isolation, but in the end, these containers, they, share, they may share the same kernel. What that means is that patching that kernel is a very important task. So just to level set here, there are several ways for you to run containers on AWS. You can choose your own adventure and install, manage, and secure your orchestration tool, or you can go for one of the orchestration tools that AWS provides. And the first one is ECS, Elastic Container Service, which is available in Sydney, and it's a service that will provide the highly scalable and highly available container orchestration uh, service for you to scale your containers on AWS. And if you want to run Kubernetes, you can choose to run with EKS, where AWS is going to secure and install and maintain the control plane for you. So for this session, we are going to focus on how to secure your container environment using ECS and ECS and Fargate. So you, you may be familiar with EC2, where in a security perspective, you are responsible for install, manage, and secure secure that uh, EC2 instance, but we also have Fargate, and Fargate uh, is available in Sydney, and what Fargate gives to you is the ability to have AWS managing the operating system for you. What that means is that we patch and scale the operating system for you, and you only need to take care of the container security itself and Fargate configuration. So quickly talking about our agenda today, we are going to talk about security in AWS and how it relates to container security. Then we jump to container best practices around security, and then we have a demo showing how to enforce security for our container environment. So as security professionals, you may be aware of the shared responsibility model. And what the shared responsibility model says is that AWS is responsible for securing the infrastructure that runs the cloud. So there will be servers, networking, and the software that runs the cloud. While as a customer, you are responsible for setting up the security in the cloud. And security in the cloud has several important aspects, and you can see on the screen. And the first one, and the most critical one, is customer data. So there are several tools and services that can help you to secure and encrypt your customer data, your data, and one that I particularly want to discuss with you is application secrets, application configuration, and API keys, which is very relevant not only for containers, but any application. Because we have seen some uh, companies or some organizations having hard-coded credentials in their code. And the reason this is not a best practice is that someone may accidentally commit this code in a public repo. And we don't want our secrets, our configuration data uh, shared with the internet. So for this reason, I would like to highlight Parameter Store. And Parameter Store is a 
service that will provide you a secure storage for you to store your configurations, your secrets, and your API keys, and your application without having them hard-coded to your application or to your container. You can download this from your application. So if we move down to the shared responsibility model, we can talk about identity and access management. And identity and access management controls who can access what on the AWS cloud. So that means your application, your server, or your container connecting to a queue like SQS, Simple Queue Service, or S3, or other AWS services. If we move down one layer to the network and fire configuration, that's one of my favorite layers. And there are several uh, layers of protection that you can implement on your container, on your app, and your application. And the first one, if we start with the border, you can have DDoS protection by using AWS Shield. And the attacks will not get to your application because you will be absorbed by AWS. If we talk uh, about OWASP top 10 attacks, like SQL injection or cross-site scripting or other attacks, you can attach uh, AWS WAF, Web Application Firewall, to protect your applications before the attacks get to your containers or to your application. And you may be asking, like, this is a container session. You are talking about um, features that I'm aware that I can install and use with EC2. And the reason I'm talking about these features is because anything that you can do security-wise on EC2, you can do with ECS and ECS and Fargate. And I have here an example for security groups. And security groups offer an amazing way for you to have micro-segmentation for your containers or for your EC2 instance. Because you can reference one layer in another layer. And for example, you can have the application layer referenced on the database layer. So if anything scales horizontally during the day, you don't need to hard code IPs or subnets, because one layer is aware of the other layer. So anything that we can do security-wise on EC2, we now can do on ECS and ECS and Fargate. So next question would be, how do I isolate? How do I secure my containers? So if we come back to the shared responsibility model, we can start talking about identity and access management. So who can control what? So since 2016, we launched a feature where you can attach IAM roles to your containers, to your tasks. And what that means is that you can have fine granularity of security control for exactly that task. So traditionally, you would have an IAM role attached to an EC2 instance, and that IAM role would have all permissions required for all containers. And the reason that this is not a good practice is that any container running on that instance will have access to all services, all AWS services that you allowed on the IAM role. So since 2016, you can have an IAM role attached to your containers, and you can define security for that IAM role. If we move down to the network and firewall configuration, uh, since reInvent 2017, we launched the ability to have test networking. And what test networks give to you is the ability to attach an, an ENI, Elastic Network Interface, to your containers. So ECS would ask for a new container running in one EC2 instance. And it will create a new namespace and attach that container to the ENI, to the Elastic Network Interface. And what that gives to you, and it's very relevant in the network security, is the ability to attach security groups for your tasks. So that means that you can have egress and outgress, inbound and outbound, controls security verifications as a firewall for your containers. So instead of giving the EC2 instance a broad access, in a network perspective, you can have that attached to your container. So if we come back to the shared responsibility model, with ECS, AWS takes responsibility of securing the data, uh, the control plane, so that's the orchestrator, and ECS has several security compliance, like PCI, uh, that can help you with PCI or SOC, while you're still responsible for uh, scaling your instances and also uh, making sure that the operating system is secure. 
However, if you choose to use Fargate, you can see that several boxes, they moved down to the AWS responsibility, and we will take care of scaling the operating system for you, and most importantly, in a con uh, security perspective, securing and managing the operating system. So Fargate has uh, some benefits. We talked about securing that, and by securing the operating system means patching the operating system, very important and critical in a security perspective. Also patching the Docker daemon on the instance and ECS agent. So that you transfer that responsibility to AWS with Fargate. And as I mentioned before, Fargate is available in Sydney. It is going to use test networking. So we talked about having an ENI Elastic Network interface attached to your container. Fargate uses that technology, so you have a security group attached to your image, uh, to your container, running container. So we talked about sharing the same kernel. So without any additional cost, you can create different service names with Fargate, and we will make sure that different services names will run in different uh, kernels. So that gives you that kernel isolation as well. Two security enhancements with Fargate, so no runtime access to the server or to the container instance or to the container uh, Docker container itself. However, you don't lose any troubleshooting uh, capability because you can stream your logs to CloudWatch logs or you can stream to your favorite logging tool. And the privilege flag for containers won't be enabled, so that will enhance security as well. So if we go back to the shared responsibility model, with uh, Fargate, you need to secure your image and ECS configuration. And AWS will take care of security of the operating system uh, for you. And if we do an analogy with a real-world uh, shipping container, uh, Fargate will be a shipping as a service. So we take care of the bottom layer, while you need to secure the container image and also your pipeline, and very importantly, the de uh, development uh, pipeline for it, that container. So if I need to secure my container, how do I secure my container image? So there are a couple of best practices there. I cannot stress that enough. No secrets hard-coded to your uh, container. Use parameter stores, use secrets manager, use these services where you can securely and uh, store your credentials, your API keys. You can even rotate these API keys if you want to with Secrets Manager. And that, then that will make sure that if your container image gets published accidentally anywhere uh, public, uh, your secrets won't be shared. So if you can build your own container image, that's amazing. Otherwise, use trusted image, use trusted image from Docker Hub. We mentioned before, because of the layered nature of this image, a lot of people may have touched it then, and we don't want to have any vulnerability in this container image. So use an image that you trust. And you can always run more than one service per uh, task, per container, but use um, one service per container, because the container orchestrator will be responsible for isolating this task, and you can do it in a, uh, using security groups or even IAM roles. No console and troubleshooting tools. So as I mentioned before, Fargate won't accept console and troubleshooting tools, and that will make your image uh, bigger, and potentially can introduce some security um, challenge there for you. Unique and uh, informative tools during the full deployment lifecycle. And that's very important, because if you do that, you will be able to track if something bad was introduced to your containers, if any vulnerability or if any bug, what caused, what PR caused, and probably track which developer uh, created that issue in your um, security you can track by using tags during the full deployment uh, lifecycle. So we say internally that good intentions are not enough. We need mechanisms and ways for enforcing these best practices. And if we talk about mechanisms and ways for enforcing best practices with containers, there are a couple of them. The first one that I would like to talk is enforce your security as code. So don't do any manual 
modification in your infrastructure, enforce everything as code. No manual modifications will make sure that a few um, you can improve the security of your infrastructure. And also have your CI CD pipeline during the full life cycle of your container. And no, this is not a DevOps session, but having DevSecOps is very important. And what I mean by that is that having security scanning for our uh, during as soon as a developer commits a code and the image is created, having a security uh, an image scan on our image will make sure that a vulnerable code does not get committed in production. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to have a vulnerable image in production. And you can use tools like Claire, which gives you uh, an image scanning capability, or, and also other tools like Aqua and Twistlock that can help you to improve security of your, uh, during your deployment pipeline. So quickly talking about the demo that I'm going to show to you. We, have, uh, we built an architecture where we are deploying all our containers in Fargate. What that means is that, as in an operational perspective and in a security perspective, there is no server to manage, there is no server to secure. So traditionally, it's been very important and critical to patch servers. AWS is doing that for us because we are using Fargate. So your cont uh, the container image for this application is hosted on Fargate. The way I'm using for connecting to external, ac external services, external AWS services, and also to the database is by using IAM roles attached to this running container. So starting with uh, connecting to server services like S3 for object storage, um, I'm using these IAM roles attached to my containers on Fargate to get authorization. So I'm not hard coding any credential. And that applies also for the RDS uh, MySQL database. So I'm not hard coding username and password in my application, because the way I'm doing is giving an IAM role for this uh, RDS MySQL database for this container to connect to the database. So it is using secure token service to uh, get temporary credentials for the um, database. The way I'm enforcing network, as I mentioned before, network security isolation is done by security groups. So the application tier, which is our containers, is referenced on the database uh, security group. So it doesn't matter if this is scales out or scales in during the day, the IPs for these tasks will be added in the security group for the data layer. And then the same applies for the elastic load balancer that we have there. Uh, our DevSecOps pipeline, how are we doing that? So as soon as a developer uh, creates a PR, and this PR is merged to our master branch, it will trigger a pipeline. So this pipeline, we are using uh, CI, CD by, uh, with code pipeline, and that will trigger code uh, build. And what code build will do? It's going to create our Docker image, but in a security perspective, most importantly, it's going to trigger Claire Scanner. And Claire Scanner is going to analyze if we have anything vulnerable in that image. So very important. In this case, we used a good image, and it's going to be committed to ECR. And ECR is our uh, container repo that has encryption in transit and encryption at rest. So your image is, uh, in a security perspective, is secure there. And after committing to ECR, this container image is going to be pushed to production. But let's say we want this demo to fail we are going to introduce some, uh, intentionally introduce some vulnerability in our container image. So the same uh, pipeline will be uh, triggered, but as soon as code build triggers Claire network scanner, Claire will detect that this is a vulnerable image. We don't want this in production, so it's going to fail the pipeline. It's not going to get to production. Can we switch to the demo, please? So I pre-recorded this demo so we could maximize our time here. And I'm using um, Cloud9 here for, for our Cloud IDE. And I'm going to create a new branch and 
I'm going to change Docker file to use uh, an image that I know it has some vulnerabilities. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to add this file to our uh, branch and commit and push to production. So in a security perspective, you are going to see that I, I, I used a very poor and vague comment. We should raise a lot of red flags and never go to and never be authorized to be merged to production. So you can see it does not add any value, and that should raise uh, several uh, red flags and not be merged. So let's have this pushed, and I'm going to switch to code commit, and code commit is our managed git repo. And I'm going to create a pull request for this uh, new Docker image that I know has some vulnerabilities. So creating the pull request in here, and again, using a very vague comment, this should never go to production, but I want to demonstrate that we can enforce security in our pipeline. So it is created, and let's pretend I'm someone else, because the person who creates the pull request should not be the one who merges this to master brand, so pretending I'm someone else here, I'm going to check the chains that were uh, executed for our application, and you can see the new Docker image is in there, and I'm going to authorize and merge this uh, to production. So when we merge this to master branch, it will automatically trigger a CI CD pipeline with code pipeline. And one thing that I would like to show to you is that as soon as we merge, we are going to get the merge the uh, commit ID. That's how I mentioned before what I mentioned before should be used for tagging the full life cycle of our um, container. So you can see there that's the uh, commit ID. And if we refresh this page, we are going to see on code commit that we can audit who created this PR and who uh, merged to production. In this case, it is the same user, but in production, you would have uh, separate these controls. So you can see, I'm going to change to ECR, our um, managed container repo, because I want to show to you that we are enforcing and showing this commit ID in our tags for the container image. So you can see we have container uh, tags there, we have commit IDs there, and we, are, we can track what commit created that one. So if we go back to our pipeline, you can see that our, our DevSecOps uh, pipeline started, and if we refresh the page, you are going to see again the commit ID. So we are tracking during the, the, the full life cycle um, the commit ID so we can track back to back who uh, created this. So while the pipeline is running, I want to show some security enhancements that we have in our uh, ECR uh, and ECS. So I'm here on the ECS uh, console, and the first thing that I would like to show to you is the instances that we are running. So there are no instances. No instance for us to patch and manage because we are using Fargate. AWS is scaling that for us, and it's securing as well. So if we open one of the services that we are running, you will be able to see uh, that we have one task definition, which is the container configuration running on the cloud, running on ECI, on Fargate. We are running three containers as of now, and we are using Fargate, the, the technology that I mentioned before. And these containers are attached to a load, load balancer. And if we open, we see that we have three tasks running there, and let me show to you some of the uh, test configuration that can help you in a security, security perspective. So you can see, again, we are using Fargate, but if you see 
uh, on the demo, we have AWS VPC. It has an IP address and an Elastic Network interface. But it also has a task role. So that's how I'm connecting to the database. So if we open the task definition to see the container configuration, you will be able to see the commit ID for that, uh, uh, that uh, specific Docker image, so tracking, again, the full lifecycle. And if you check environment variables, you are not going to find database password, because, again, we are using IAM roles for getting temporary credentials. So going to the EC, uh, EC2 console, you will see some servers there. They are not the server ser servers running our container. It's just Cloud9 and a VPN. However, if we check the network interfaces that we have, you will see that we do have several Elastic Network interfaces that were created by Fargate. And these were attached to your tasks running on, EC2, uh, on Fargate. So you can see that these tasks, they have security groups. And if we open one of the security groups, we will be able to see the micro-segmentation that security groups can help you with. So that's the application layer security group. So if I open that one, you will be able to see that the application, the container security group, is authorizing uh, the load balancer security group on port, on port 30, uh, 2368. And if we open the other security group, which is the database layer security group, you will see that the security group used by the application layer is authorized to connect there. And if we get the other uh, security group, you will be able to see that this is the only security group that has internet access. So 443 and also 80. So that's how we're doing micro-segmentation. Uh, lastly, but not least, uh, let's see the IAM role that we are attaching to this container. So we showed the network security, that we are using security groups. Now we are going to show the IAM for enforcing uh, the consumption of AWS services, authentication and authorization, and also the database connection to the database. So n no longer we need to hard code credentials for the database. We are using IAM for connecting to RDS MySQL. So as you can see, we have a role there that is authorizing our container to connect, to do a DB connect to our database ghost on that region and on that account. So let's go back to the pipeline that we triggered that was using uh, an image that I know it, which is vulnerable. And refreshing that, we, you will see that the demo failed. The pipeline failed. And if we go there and check the reason why this demo failed, you will be able to see that it failed. And if you go to post build where Claire runs the Docker, uh, the runtime uh, verification, security verification, you will see that Claire detected seven vulnerabilities in our container image. And this was luckily not available in production. So we enforced security in our pipeline. And if you want to do some remediation and understand why this happened, you will be able to open uh, the CVE that has description for this um, vulnerability introduced by the wrong container image. So that's the demo that I have to show how to enforce network and uh, IAM and access control management on AWS, but also how to enforce security scanning and never getting a vulnerable image in our production. Uh, can we switch back to the, yeah, thanks. Uh, just summing up. Uh, containers are first-class citizens on AWS. So anything that you can do security-wise on EC2, you can do with ECS and ECS and Fargate. Uh, Fargate means that AWS will do more in a security perspective, and you don't need to worry about scaling the operating system and also securing that operating system. You will take care of your container image. And mechanisms that can help you to enforce the security are IAM, security groups, parameter store, secrets manager, and code star as well. 
So with that, I thank you for your attention, and my contacts are there, and I'm here for questions and answers. Thank you.